So I've been thinking for a little while now about changing my intro to Thai kicks. It's been the same for a long time. And um, yeah, in all honesty, I think a lot of people are starting to probably feel a little bit bored with it. If I'm feeling bored with it, I can imagine anyone that's watching is feeling a little bit bored with it. I've been reading this book, which has been absolutely epic. If you have not heard of this book, go and get it or at least go and listen to the audiobook before the movie comes out this spring. It comes out in March and it's directed by the legend that is Steven Spielberg. I live here in Columbus, Ohio. In 2045, it's still ranked the fastest growing city on earth. They called our generation the missing millions. Missing not because we went anywhere. There's nowhere left to go. Nowhere except the Oasis. It's the only place that feels like I mean anything. A world where the limits of reality are your own imagination. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's Ready Player One, you need to read it. It is amazing. And where that kind of coincides with me talking about my intro, I think it's time to rock it up a little bit. Ready for Vlog 50 to celebrate that. Also, I've been trying to think about a really cool giveaway to do. It's Saturday, I've got to get to work, but we've got an adventure taking place in a couple of days time. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, I had work yesterday. That was it wasn't it wasn't a bad day. It wasn't too crazy. It's the summer holidays for some of the school guys, so it's not as mental as it could be. But um, tomorrow I'm off to London to meet the founder of Liquid Proof and have a look at some of his sneakers. Next stop tomorrow morning, bright and early, to get on the train. About to catch an Uber and get on the train. So we made it to the train station. So finally made it to Houston and I'm gonna get on the underground and head over to Soho. Yeah, good. Not too bad, apart from the fact I just got like full blown shouted at by the guy outside of the crew. So this is John, and he is the founder of Liquid Proof, and um, we're going to talk a little bit in depth about how Liquid Proof came to be, and have a really good conversation about everything that's happening in the future with Liquid Proof, and we're going to have a little look at these unreleased Yeezys. Yeah, we'll just have a little talk about liquid proof then, really. You know, what's uh, that? <laughs> who, who, what is liquid proof? I find it really hard to talk when you know a camera's pointing on you. I always have to. I always will find it really difficult. But, dude, try and imagine <laughs> my position when I went on Dragon's Den. Well, that's it. I was going to say about being in a room with like a load of people that have massive success in business well I'm sure failures too but massive success in business you're kind of going into the middle of like 
a situation where you're trying to pitch yours as being something that's the next big thing for them. And that must be pretty daunting. Liquid Proof produces advanced nanotech coatings for almost any surface. We're best known for our innovative and award-winning footwear protection. It was, it was crazy because at that, at that point it was still really early on. I was really early on in launching the product. Yeah. I was still operating from my spare room and <laughs> as my office, I was out on the road a lot in front of clients. And yeah. When they invited me on, um, I was, first of all, I thought it was a prank call. <laughs> like, yeah. Did you apply? No. Did you, no, you just rang So they, 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 through the business winning um, top 10 most innovative businesses yeah. in the startup awards, and then subsequently being um, put forward to be a startup 100. Okay. Like a, yeah, top 100 startups. Um, we got a bit of press off the back of that. Yeah. So the researchers picked it up. Okay. They thought, right, well, obviously it could, could be a pretty good yeah. product to show on TV. Have you ever thought about it? I was like, you're winding me up here. <laughs> when he emailed me, I was like, okay, I'm really sorry. Like, let's, you, could, you could understand my, I have some really, yeah, my friends would wind me up about yeah. that sort of thing. He was like, look, I get it. But yeah, that's not the first time. Do you want to do it? And I was like, oh, okay. So I asked like family and friends. Yeah. You also got, you know, got this. And it's like, no, of don't do it, don't do it. Why are you giving away your money? That's why are you going to give away a bit of your business? You're going to be on national TV, aren't you yeah. scared? And all this pressure starts building up. And it was my baby. Yeah. And I obviously practiced and rehearsed my pitch. Yeah. I, I knew the product inside and out. I knew yeah. my business. I didn't want to be one of those people that got on there and started to stutter and stammer. I was nervous, don't get me wrong, yeah. because when it, you, that's what fuels you in any situation. You, you're out of your comfort zone and that's what powers you forward. I, I made a decision that I wanted to go on there yeah. and do my very best. Mm -hmm. I would have worked, walked out of there knowing that I'd done that, yeah. whether they took the business or not. Just walked in and it is, as you've seen on TV, you've got the five dragons in front of you. Yeah. You're in the studio. You're on your own. I was on my own. Yeah. Um, and then you've got the 25, 20, 25 people behind the camera. Cameras. You don't you've know got that. Multiple That's hidden what you don't hear about. You've got multiple hidden cameras okay. around the studio. Yeah. Like in the lifts and bits and pieces like that. But it's the production team, the sound engineers. Yeah. And I didn't even clock that. <laughs> so when I walked in, I was like, oh, I looked around. I was like, wow. Because I'd already kind of absorbed that I'd be in front of the dragons. Yeah. When I walked in, I was like, oh, wow. And it, and then what put me in good stead was obviously demonstrate the product very, very well. It yeah. shows very well on TV. Yeah. And they gave me a standing ovation. Like they were clapping. They were like, I was like, oh my God, that settled me. Yeah. I was like, oh. that was a big weight on my shoulder. I was like, you've done it. Yeah. Now is actually the hard bit that you can't rehearse because mm -hmm. you don't necessarily know what questions they can ask you. Yeah. And it was just time to be me. 85% of businesses that get investment on the show don't yeah. actually get it when you go back. Oh, really? Yeah. So All right. You do the deal in the den, and then obviously the official due diligence kicks in. Yeah. They start looking further through your paperwork because it's. So I recorded it in May 2015. Yeah. It didn't get shown until January 2016. Bloody house. And we lot. didn't actually do the all the paperwork and the signing of the contract in August 2016. Bloody hell. That's a long process to get basically someone involved to hopefully help your business grow yeah. but then they just want to be certain everything's above of course, board of course of yeah. course and i would do the same when i if i was when i were investing in, in businesses and you've got to look through the, the, the yeah. stuff what, what's catch 22 is that because you did the deal so far ahead you basically sign non-disclosure yeah we're well, not allowed to talk about it yeah we couldn't come into business together yeah because then the press or people will find out. Oh, so you must be working together. Yeah. So you have to. You can't work together. So yeah. basically, my business was stagnant for that whole period of time when okay. I just wanted it. That explains a little bit more to me, sort of in terms of like how it's now starting to roll out a lot more. To you know, we were talking about seven Liverpool. It's been very slow progress and rolling us out. So the stuff like seven and off office offspring was all through through me. Through yourself, yourself, yeah. Which which is like positive but now we're starting to integrate a bit more we're starting to go into bigger things i'm going to give you some feedback from people that Yay. i've spoken to i love it that's, a, that's, a, that's how we that's how we grow so what i've been doing really recently is 
going to see some, hooking up with some old friends, saying like, what can we do? Yeah. How do we, you know, what's going on? Give me feedback. So yeah, yeah fire it away. Okay, like, I'm up so with... um, obviously I'm grateful the fact that I'm involved with the um, influencer program, okay. and obviously I get, you know, the ability to kind of basically help other people out if they want to try it for the first time mm -hmm. and they want to sort of Perfect. see what Liquid Proof's about. If someone comes to me and says, look, I've always wanted to try Liquid Proof as a brand, where can I get it from? You know, I'll give them the information about where they can buy it from, stores-wise, if they want to go and walk into a store because they can't wait online. Yeah. But if they're looking for a discount and they want a discount code, I can try and help them out with that. And then what I also do is kind of help them with application from, from yeah, yeah. watching anything that you guys put out. Because it's important, that's the biggest thing. Massively, huge. You get, like, end of day, if you miss a part, yeah. that's the bit that's going to get damaged. And that's exactly. We, we, try, we try and educate customers as much. It's just like painting a wall. Yeah. You paint a wall and you miss a bit, yeah. there's a big gap. Of course there but is. But it's obvious. Yeah. Because liquor proof is invisible, yeah. that Can't was tell. always a problem. So. And what I tend to do is almost kind of go above and beyond maybe what oh, yeah. the recommend is because I turn around and say to someone who wants to buy a small bottle of liquid proof over the larger size bottle of liquid proof, will this do more than one or two shoes? And I'll say, no. this, is, this is up to you. You can use it as per instructions, that's fine. But if you feel that shoe is seriously precious to you, yeah. I would just protect that so shoe good. to the max. Yeah, yeah. Get, get it, get and it the, done the, the way thing, it should be what, done. What, we, what I did when I developed the pro product is, it doesn't matter how much you put on. Yeah. You could soak the shoe until yeah. it's wringing dry. I mean, that would be a waste, yeah. but it's safe. Yeah. Whereas the chemicals and the solvents and the propellants and all the other products, yeah. okay, you spray too much of that and yeah. it's been proven, it's been on, it's documented, it will damage your shoe. Yeah, that's Solvent, Burn, yeah. happens. That all that stuff is ethanol, alcohol based. Yeah. Like aceto that that propellant stuff is going to damage your trainers if you spray too much. Yeah. So the mindset of this is don't treat it like what you've traditionally done. Yeah. It's different from an aerosol. It's not just a spray mist. Yeah. It is wherever that product, the technology and coating goes. Yeah. And impregnates and dries mm -hmm. is what's protected. Excellent. And it's long term. So. Another thing that you've got to think about is because it's invisible and it's breathable. Yeah. You try and you put it on; it doesn't block air gaps. The yeah. prime net, yeah. you know, it's going to go through, right? Yeah. It's the same as where your foot goes. Yeah, there's a big hole there. Mm -hmm. There's holes where the laces are. Water's going to get through that. It's, yeah. If you see it, yeah, then it's not going to. It's not going to be breathable and it's not going to be invisible. Yeah. So you've got to bear that in mind. You're not um, shrink wrapping your shoes. Exactly. At the end of the or day. if you want something, you know, basically, what, what we've done is we've used the safest technology you can get to until either affecting the look, feel, yeah. or breathability of the material. Anything more than that, you'll start seeing it, and obviously, then then I wouldn't use it. Yeah. So I didn't do it. So what I did was like, right, what, what's the level of technology I can get to yeah. before we start deteriorating all the other elements yeah. and let's get it to there until we develop something else until new technology comes into play probably one of the last questions without kind of getting to uh, in depth of things if it's if it's new is that what's the next thing that you can say what's the next thing that you is it uh, okay so i mean we've gone on from the protectors yeah so we have the blue droplet which is fabric literally every material okay yeah. it works on levers works on smooth levers and does all the good stuff okay and it's completely safe yeah we then was looking at it and thought, how do we improve what we do? Yeah. And we could improve it on leather. Yeah. So we created a, a, a more effective leather protector. Uh -huh. So if you're, you've are you just got a leather sneaker, then you go for the leather one. Yeah. Then we were like, a lot of customers are asking us, how do I, how do I get my, whatever, my garment, my accessories, my footwear, yeah. up to a clean condition to, to apply it proof? Yeah. Because I've now got marks on my shoes. Yeah. So we were like, okay, right. What cleaner can we use? Cleaners out there are thousands and thousands of different cleaners. Yeah. And I was thinking, why? Yeah. When I try and do something, I do, yeah, let's try and be as effective as possible. Others, let's just not do it at all. I would yeah. not want to sell or do waste my time on something that that ultimately doesn't work. Yeah. Because it just, it's, it's pointless. Of course. And we're already in a consumption where we're, we're just burning through stuff, clothes, we wear it like three, four times, get rid of it, mm -hmm. um, packaging. I hate, 
it's just let's figure out where why we're we're damaging this earth. We've only got one. Yeah. So our cleaner, right? It's hundred percent natural, and it's biodegradable. Yeah. So you can use that on anything. Mm -hmm. So it goes from cleaning glass, yeah, your clothes, through to an industrial oil spill. You mix that up in various water yeah. concentrates. Yeah. You can you can do you can clean anything. So now you can go and replace all your cleaners yeah. with so one. What? Imagine the packaging reduction, the carbon footprint of all Definitely. these transport companies moving all this chemicals around mm -hmm. and the chemicals traditionally are damaging the environment. Yeah. They're polluting the, the this one. So, so we from, did that. From sneaker cleaning where you're conscious of sort of damaging materials to I'm not gonna lie and tell you that I might have cleaned my tile floor in my kitchen with your cleaner. Good. I'm not That's even joking. Yeah, yeah. But that I, I knew that that was its purpose so I have genuinely yeah, yeah. used it in that way. Um, so it's, it's look, again, that's a, it's an educational process trying to tell people, yeah, you can do this one, use this one thing for yeah. everything. You just change your perception of these market, massive, massive corporations trying to take as much money from you as possible yeah. to sell you a bathroom cleaner, then a, then a slightly different hob cleaner, then you need a different one for your oven, then you need a different one for your sink, then you need a different one for your dishes. Oh, you can't clean the one with your dishes in your dishwasher, and then you can't clean your clothes with that. Could you, yeah. Like, why are there so many different things? So many different things. Truly, really a clean agent, like different. So, yeah. so we developed that that you can you can use it safely yeah. on any material. Let's have a little look at these shoes. So, these are the Beluga 2.0s. A little thumbnail for this as well. So, these don't come out. Apparently, there is no set release, but these aren't supposed to be out until October this year. And the differences between the Beluga 2.0 and the original Beluga, if you can remember, is that there was a, a huge orange stripe running on the front, as uh, Janet is going to demonstrate for me. Um, and yeah, you know, they are a really, really cool looking shoe. They're a lot, a lot more sort of silver grey than I expected them to be. They're definitely not quite as. Um, loud as the previous versions with the uh, with in terms of sort of the stripe on it and and the sole definitely is a little bit darker i think really overall my opinion on them is they actually I'm, i actually prefer these to the original yeah belugas okay because they're slightly more understated yeah definitely they're definitely a lot more silver yeah than say the green, the green, yeah, from, on the original, yeah, and the original obviously is Larry. You, you, there's no way you're not catching someone's eye with a, a luminous orange Definitely. stripe down. But these are a bit more understated. They're a bit cleaner. They go with a better fit. Yeah. So this is the original Beluga 1.0, and as you can see, it's got the rather loud orange stripe running across the front side with a supply through 50 on the side of it. And this is the new 2.0 Beluga, and you can see the difference is that you've got the orange supply 350 on the side of it as well, uh, in reverse, and the stripe is different on both shoe. And with this one particularly, it is a lot more silver grey, whereas the uh, original Beluga had more of kind of a grey, sort of olivey kind of tone running through it all. And um, as Yana said, you know, this is a little bit more sort of understated. I think it's not nowhere near as loud as you to um, to walk around in. But I can imagine from your standpoint, it, it is quite easy to fit with quite a lot of clothes actually. So um, yeah, the differences are are noticeable. Obviously you've got the heel tabs back on this shoe and like the original didn't have that as well with the V2s and the laces uh, are, are different. This is kind of a solid sort of grey silver whereas with the original Belugas it's more of a sort of patterned lace, rope lace. So uh, yeah, thanks. Really appreciate you letting me have a look no at the new Beluga that's coming out in October and we're going to have a quick on feet of this shoe courtesy of Jana because <laughs> they fit you and they don't yeah. fit me
So that was the review of the Beluga 2.0. I want to thank Jana for letting me have a look at the, well, undisclosed release of Yeezy V2. And um, thanks for coming on Ty Kicks this week. It's been uh, awesome thanks to meet you. On. And uh, yeah, go check out Liquid Proof's website. They've got some amazing products on there, including their protector and the new eco cleaner and uh, yeah that's that's me out let's go and check out Carnaby Street let's go and have a look at size let's go and have a little look at what they've got in some of the stores just off Oxford Street see what they have got. Wanted to see if they got the other colorway of the uh, Vaporfly 4% to the eyes blue. And they did. Awesome to see that in person. I actually really do like that colorway. Hey, nice one. Nick Hamilton, how cool is that? So um, to sum things up really, I had a great day in London. It's been a little while since I've been able to get out and about properly, but it was a fantastic interview with Jana Valley from Liquid Proof. If you haven't tried any of Liquid Proof's products, it's definitely worth trying out. You've seen if you've been following Thai Kicks for quite a long time now and you would know the results that you get from liquid proof the lack of worry about potential staining of some of your lighter more fragile footwear it's something that i definitely recommend to everyone that i speak to and if you haven't tried it and you haven't also tried their new eco cleaner if you want a 30 percent off your first car with liquid proof online and i'll leave their web address in the description down below 
hit me up in the comment section and I will get that out to you. I will personally contact you. I answer every single message sent to me through the comments down in that uh, section down below. And in exchange, please like the video and subscribe. There should be a button somewhere around this area up here before the end of the video. Remember to hit that bell as well. And I forgot to mention one final thing. The Yeezy for Kiki raffle has only got eight days left. If you have not donated, the web address for the Just Giving page is down below as well. It costs all of 10 pounds, $15 to get yourself entered and that could win you a pair of Zebra Yeezys. It is a donation to the Yeezy for Kiki appeal and you are helping someone with terminal cancer enjoy some memories with her family. It's been a great vlog this week and I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you this time next week for, you guessed it, another Thai Kicks vlog.